Now more than ever, innovative technologies are fueling change and sparking new ways of thinking. Collaboration between corporations and startups is key to staying at the forefront of these trends. However, finding the right startups can be expensive, time-consuming, and ineffective. But Plug and Play is here to help. As a corporate partner, you will gain access to a whole ecosystem of innovation. Discover startups that meet your tech interests. Stay updated on the latest trends and network with industry peers. We will help you during every stage of your innovation journey, no matter where you are and where you want to go. Get in touch today. Moin, everybody. That's what we say here in the northern part of Germany. Moin from the beautiful and actually sunny city of Hamburg, Welcome to the Plug and Play Supply Chain Europe Expo 2021. My name is Dorothy and I have the honor to guide you through this very special event. Our wish was to welcome all of you here in Hamburg. We all know it's impossible at the moment, but we cross our fingers for next year. So our event is really, yeah, let's say 2021 like. It's virtual, it's live, and it's streamed to all of you, our guests from all around the globe. We want to welcome especially our corporate partners, our tech companies, and our strategic partners. Without you, this event would not be possible. Thank you so much for your input and for your support. Yet the Expo team has put a lot of work into our program. For sure, everybody here in Hamburg was tested negative. I would say, let's go, let's start. Today, we want to answer one question. How does the future of supply chain and logistic look like? And speaking of questions, we also want your questions. We want interaction. And for that, we have chosen a very interactive platform. So thanks for hopping in. We use hop in and it's very easy to use. If you want to get in contact with us, pose your questions. If you have any technical problems, please use the chat function, which you can find on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you can find the main stage where you are at the moment. Also the event overview, the sessions, the reception, expo and so on. I'm sure that will work out easily. Um, if you have any technical problems, just reload the website, then it should work. Maybe let's check if the chat function works. I'm in Hamburg at the moment. I would type Hamburg. Where are you located? Tell me. Come on. I wait for your, for your cities over there. So let's see. Yeah, the duration of our event is round about three hours. Remember events in the past. What did you do when you've been on an event? You switched off your mobile or placed them on silent. So we are the perfect excuse for you to visit our event without phone calls, without checking emails and so on. So if you like, we are your excuse for the next three hours. You know where the flight button is, right? So let's start. Plug and Play is the biggest innovation platform and it connects the largest corporations with world's best startups. And today we want to celebrate them and the program they went through the last year. And there is one person who knows this program, I would say best. It's the director of Plug and Play Hamburg and I want to welcome him here on stage, Salah Faridi. Here he is. Hello, Salah. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you here. Nice to see you too. I, I'm sure there was an applause at the home office. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but uh, whoever is here, I'm happy that they are. Salah, what an exciting day. Um, everything is prepared. We're happy to start. Um, how do you feel? Excited. I mean, uh, we are all, uh, there's multiple feelings, right? You're yeah. nervous, you hope that everything goes well. It's live, we had pre-recorded sessions. So um, the most important thing is that, I mean, our team, our partners, our startups, the tech companies, everybody has so much, uh, puts in so much work and mm -hmm. so much effort that everybody somehow wants to be rewarded. And uh, I hope everything goes well and especially that uh, everybody enjoys the show. For sure, we all will. 
So it's a crazy situation with the COVID pandemic. Did it change something in the work, in the program and everything? Well, uh, uh, other than uh, that, I think everybody learned how to unmute yourself to be, mm -hmm. uh, to be heard. And uh, yes, we can see your screen. Um, it was a serious wake up call for a lot of corporations out there. So um, I've had uh, multiple conversations with different corporations, be it our partners, be it corporations that we talk to and are in touch with. Um, really various topics from buying laptops for the whole company up to the point of really thinking about the future model of your own business. And um, I remember one conversation uh, which was at the very beginning of the COVID situation, which was um, with one, one of our corporate partners, and it was actually Jörg Debos, who we, you will see later on, um, together with Nikki on a very interesting panel. And he's a very positive guy. And he said, Salah, um, there is a word in Mandarin, and uh, I hope it's true, uh, because I don't speak <laughs> Mandarin and I don't speak any other Chinese uh, um, dialect. Very difficult, so. <laughs> it, it is, and I admire everyone who can. But uh, it says that the word crisis consists out of two words, danger and opportunity. Really? And you have to focus on the opportunity. And this state in, in, in all of our heads, yeah? mm -hmm. this state in my head and our team, we try to really take this as our motto and our mantra and put it on to everyone we spoke to, create mm -hmm. new opportunities, looking for the bright side. It's difficult, seriously, it's Absolutely. difficult in such a, a situation. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't talk that it's, it's everything is going to be okay. Eventually it will, mm -hmm. but you need to put in something. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, I mean, uh, we switched some of our day-to-day -day work. We went more into the transformation. We worked into workshops, virtual events, and we tried everything to take, to make the best out of the situation that we cannot meet face-to-face -face like we're doing right yeah. now with this safety this is brand new. <laughs> this is brand new indeed. And, uh, but absolutely, it had a massive effect on our work. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us how the plug and play ecosystem works? Absolutely. So uh, plug and play has a lot of multiple large international uh, locations. Um, so it has a large international presence. Mm -hmm. um, around the globe, we try to connect our corporate partners with the best technology startups out there. It can be late stage uh, or early stage startups. It can be established tech companies. But at the end, we try to help both parties. So for the corporations, it's about their innovation roadmap, their strategies, execution of pilot projects. And uh, for the startups, it's about helping, helping them basically secure business, funding, um, connect them to our ecosystem, to other VCs, for example, out there, um, and to all the mentors and everything that we provide. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we do not take any shares nor um, fees from the startups and tech companies to participate. And then uh, obviously one of the most important things that we try to do in, in every location, similar to here in Hamburg, we try to be a part, a complementary part of the ecosystem, which means that um, we try to build the bridge, the international bridge towards Silicon Valley and our other locations. And we try to really be part of it. Like, I mean, we have great initiatives here, like the digital hub logistics. You will have the opportunity to meet Johannes later on in the networking area as well, or us with the future Hamburg Award supporting the city in order to also be part of the whole innovation journey of the world. And you all have such a great and positive energy. I'm sure it's also fun working with you. We try our best. And being your partner. Thank you. So, Salah, what are you actually most excited about? Everything. Everything? <laughs> that was the perfect answer. <laughs> I, I cannot say anything because if you would know how much work went into this. I can um, imagine, yeah. It's, it's great. You will see some insights from our partners, insights from the startups, how they work together. Um, exciting panel discussions. Uh, we will have uh, topics from Olivia is going to have a nice uh, keynote about the future trends and the past trends of supply chain, uh, um, uh, not only the technology trends, but also within the VC area, for mm -hmm. example, what happened on the investment side. Uh, and at the end, uh, that's why I really recommend everyone to stay online. Networking in nowadays situation is very difficult. You know that? So we try to at least have some experience uh, impressions from the past mm. and one impression that we had was basically there are fireside chats there was clubhouse the trend mm -hmm. everybody was listening to Boom. something <laughs> yeah. so let's do a little bit of both uh, we have the opportunity later on so everybody can join five different sessions uh, listen in you can participate ask questions uh, just come up for a chip chat uh, it can be part of the topic it can be something completely else let's try to make the best out of it in a virtual world to network Use it, it's a unique opportunity, everybody. So, one last question, Salar. 
uh, event like this, a program like this in such a crazy time is only possible with great people yeah. and their hard blood, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, we all know innovation at the moment is absolutely challenging mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, I mean, if you look at the whole situation, not only because of the, the current situation that physical meetings are difficult, but in general. So, um, I mean, as I said multiple times, there has been a lot of hard work into this. Um, I always refer as plug and play as an innovation gym. And we pro provide somehow the equipment and we provide the guidance. But at the end, it's up to the athletes mm. themselves, our corporate partners, mm. our startups, what they make out of it. Um, and they did a lot. Yeah, they did whatever they could to make this a success. So mm. I would like to take this opportunity actually to thank our corporate partners, our champions especially, day-to-day -day work with them. I would like to thank the executives of our corporate partners who have always supported us, be it left and right on panels, on internal conversations, to make this really a success. And last but not least, the um, startups and tech companies. I mean, these are brilliant minds. I'm, every time I'm inspired uh, speaking to them, it's exciting to see in such a situation to keep working, to mm. keep thriving, to keep looking for that success and doing mm. everything day and night to make it a success. Respect to everyone. Um, and last but not least, the best team in the world that I'm honored and uh, really humbled to work together with, the Plug and Play Hamburg team. So thank you. And Dorothy, I would suggest the following. Let's have a little look because we prepared a little video that kind of summarizes a little bit what we've done. Greetings from Silicon Valley. Welcome to our Supply Chain Europe Expo hosted from Hamburg. Hamburg is one of the most important ports in Europe, one of the most important logistics uh, centers in Europe. And we see a lot of potential here to connect Europe, Germany, Hamburg, together with Silicon Valley and build the bridge. I think the biggest thing we get is uh, time to market in terms of uh, trying out new technologies and business model, testing it, and then taking it to market. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we cannot do it on our own. And uh, here you have uh, the enthusiasm of the startup, the focus, and uh, the deep knowledge of uh, the business that we bring in. And we have a huge transformation agenda in Dell, and Plug and Play and the startups are bringing us on that path. So by showing us the technologies that are out there, showing us the dynamism that is in the marketplace, um, all the fantastic, great ideas, we can bring that into Dell, into our culture. In Dell, we very much believe that working with startups can complement basically our existing sort of knowledge and skills and capabilities within the organization. Um, and we very much appreciate the disruptive and complementary nature that they can bring to the table. Great. And again, thanks to Salar for this interesting talk and these insights. So join us now in the welcoming speech of the Deputy Mayor and Senator of Science, Research, Equalities and Districts, Katharina Fegebank, and the Senator of Economy and Innovation of the City of Hamburg, Michael Westhagemann. Let's go to the plug and play and thank you very much Dorothy for handing over for my opening remarks. How shall the idea city of future be designed? That is indeed a very interesting question and I would like to uh, ask all of you to take a good look at Hamburg because uh, this is linked to our vision of a creative, eco-friendly and sustainable society and of course cities have a very special role as a driving force for innovation, technology and science for a broad area within the region. And as a minister or senator for science and research, 
I, of course, want to tell you that science is innovative and is always striving to accomplishing something new. All disciplines want to transform and reshape society, life science as well as humanity, social sciences and engineering. And our university and other scientific institutions have the tools to create a breeding ground for innovative ideas and to start the transformation process of our society. Science has one big asset. Everybody will benefit from the groundbreaking research. And of course, we will need to make sure that we are aware of this and know that their tax euros goes. We need to showcase great and innovative ideas to change our daily lives and to create new pillars for businesses and new industries. Our state government is promoting a really science-friendly environment. Because as a young scientist or researcher, you need more than just warm words. You need programs and funding, and of course, a spirit that shows we can do, and we can do it together. And uh, this is what we do. We have a program, it's called Call for Transfer. It is highly successful and a starting point for around about 40 university and um, college projects to register as the business and to carry on with their scientific work. We then have introduced science scouts to find great projects and ideas at our universities, which otherwise would be hidden. And our strategy to make innovation a success is curious and creative people, is structures and government supplies and creative places and hubs. And therefore, we have a groundbreaking project. It's called the Science City, the Science City Hamburg-Barenfeld. It is uh, based and placed in a district called Barenfeld on the outskirts of Hamburg. And this will take Hamburg straight onto the world map until 2014. And in this new place, in this new district, uh, we really uh, have science, we have research, and we all have our institutions uh, to combine science and research with new sustainable housing, as well as new jobs in industries of the future. The Science City Barenfeld is a suburb of innovation and progress. Furthermore, we want to incubate new scientific clusters to reshape and reconsider the idea of how to create clusters. So far, they are based in our economic field. And now we would like uh, to take the science uh, as the starting point for a cluster, uh, like they do it in Cambridge, for instance, or in Israel. And therefore, we want to create a new independent ecosystem of business and research facilities, and of course, encourage companies from the private sector to invest there. I'm very sure modern companies will embrace modern incentives. Topic-wise, climate research, material research, systemically and structural biology, infectious research, or data science, just to name a few fields. And the science city I just uh, outlined to you is the centerpiece of that strategy, to create a lot of new spaces there, including startup labs, Warenfeld, an innovation village, two innovation factories, and as well as a tech hub village. So Hamburg is a city of progress and prosperity and a safe harbor for new ideas. So if you're a tech, science or start of business, get in touch with us, with our government departments, with our contact offices or startup networks, be creative, be curious, be impatient, think out of the box and challenge the old and traditional ideas. Best of luck to all of you. Have an enjoyable expo. And now I would like to hand over to my colleague, the Minister for Economic Affairs, Michael Michael Westhagemann. Good luck. Katharina, thank you very much. Uh, I would say also to everybody, um, warm welcome around the world. Hopefully a lot of people are listening to us. Now we have uh, this special expo event in the area of supply chain. Um, that is one of the biggest expo here in Europe. And we are really happy that we have this this year also in Hamburg. Maybe everybody um, remembers for us here in Hamburg is a, a special year while we have also the ITS 
World Congress this year, and you will find a lot of uh, logistics, but you will also find mobility and hopefully the right answer for the future. And um, I'm really happy that um, we have this special event this year here in Hamburg. And of course, every time there is a, a question, who is driving innovation? We believe also here in Hamburg, we are driver in innovation. And then, of course, please remember the future Hamburg Award 2021. Please let us know what is your ideas of innovation. We are really happy to have it here. And we are, on the end, really happy that we have this really good expo here in Hamburg. Thank you very much also to Plug and Play. Thank you so much, Senator Westhagemann. We love Hamburg, we love your city, and hopefully we can invite you next year all together here in this beautiful city. We heard about the Future Hamburg Award, where startups can apply for till end of this month. You want more information? What is the Future Hamburg Award? We have information. Here we go. want more information just visit the booth at the end of our event and now let's learn more about the collaboration between our corporate partners and our startups um, and let's focus on the topic supply chain automation i'd like to hand over to livia todd ventures director at plug and play hello livia <laughs> portion of startups that you are about to see is a special one, as this group also represents our very first success stories out of Hamburg. We focused on highly relevant topics such as supply chain automation, robotics and visibility. Keep watching and discover how our startups and corporate partners work together on shaping the future of logistics. And now, let's introduce our startups. We are developing a complicated robotic system for warehouse uh, processes automatization. And our product, Invent Reviewer, is a semi-automatic system for uh, stock-taking process automatization. Learning Power is building enterprise document processing software with AI. Our goal is to process any enterprise document with high accuracy and fast speed. Our startup, Seven Bridges, is an AI-powered logistics platform and it provides really an easy to use unified experience that brings world-class logistic capabilities to any company. We are your partner along the entire robotic journey by two products. One is Lots of Bots, um, the biggest comparison page for AGVs and AMRs. And the second one is VacuSense, a vendor and hardware agnostic robot control tower. We help companies all over the world uh, with in-transit visibility data, meaning we tell them where their shipments are and how those shipments are doing. And the way we do that is with these little trackers that go on the shipment. With our sensors and with our app-based coaching, we actually give people training while they're doing the job or very, very quickly after they finish the job in the case of the apps. Natix can make your cameras smart, but at the same time GDPR compliant. So my supply is a, a startup focusing on procurement, especially the sourcing area and procurement. We consider the area from the supplier scouting until the contracting of the suppliers. And what we do is automating this process and even driving it to an autonomous process. We develop truckload optimization software. We create 3D visualization with a smart loading algorithm behind it. The 
challenge is that some of our customers are sending their orders via email and this needs to be entered manually into our SAP system. It is important for us to automate this process. The email should be read automatically and then create an order in our SAP system. For this challenge, we choose Learning for. With them, we want to fully automate this process, which will save us time and costs. Regarding the collaboration with Learning Pal, uh, the original challenge was um, about digitizing our operations, of course. And for some use cases, you just can't replace paper. So it was a really efficient way to uh, to get those paper in um, in a more um, digestible format uh, in our in our data strategy. We have developed uh, a software uh, sensor agnostic uh, platform which can integrate any kind of data to to visualize on the front end and show where our shipments are. But what we of course do not have is the hardware related to that. So we reached out uh, to Plug and Play Hamburg. And what we do with DSV is we help them track pharmaceutical shipments, high value shipments, and DSV is now looking to bring this as a value added service to all of their customers as a logistics company. Pharma Logistics is a very important strategic partner for us and we develop a solution for them to make their inventory processes faster and more precise. We started with the pilot and then rolled out a couple other system in Russian office and we continue working with them and um, deepen our collaboration not only in Moscow but in uh, European countries. The original challenge uh, we faced um, was about omnichannel and the fact that uh, you have um, an increase uh, in home deliveries and, and, sh and shorter delivery times. Um, so preserving good conditions, good working conditions is essential. And we know that order preparation will keep intensifying in our warehouses. So that's why we, we collaborate today with uh, Sauter Analytics um, on, coach on coaching our picking teams to prevent musculoskeletal disorders. So we're coming in with our wearable technology and our coaching solutions, which provide a very um, engaging and interesting experience for the workers. We help them move in safer and more efficient movement patterns. And then by doing that and applying this new coaching, workers can reduce their injury rates by up to 50%. We believe in general that a collaboration with startups is the right way to go because startups play a key role in digitizing and transforming the logistics industry. Plug and Play helped us to match with those startups. Plug and Play has the ability to understand also complex requests from our business unit and to offer us a flexible and customized screening of solutions to solve our problem. Plug and Play have been a great partner for us over the last year and have helped us deliver uh, business growth and really this is across three buckets. The first is providing us access to corporations and the opportunity to pitch to them. Uh, the second is the, the content and the workshops and the information that they provide to help advance our thinking and, and allow us to learn from experts. And then the third is the support networks. Plug and Play has helped us since day one of our journey. Uh, around two years ago, the general partner of Plug and Play actually heard us out he invested in our idea. Since then, we have been part of uh, several acceleration programs of Plug and Play. Um, Plug and Play helps us very much uh, driving our solution and our ideas to the next level uh, because it helps very much challenging our ideas and bringing us together with new customers. We have direct access to the best industry players through the innovation platform. It would be almost impossible to reach top companies just to ask about their struggles and to discuss ways to solve it. Especially for us as a B2B startup, this early customer access is highly relevant so that we can develop our products along the customer needs by a trusty, trustworthy relationship. So 
much. It's also so interesting to see our home office, don't you agree? Um, and the chat function works. Thank you very much for sending us your locations. We have Portugal, we have Slovenia, we have London, we have oh, so many cities. Thank you very much uh, for sending your locations. So we are now thrilled to present our first keynote speaker from our anchor partner, D.B. Schenker, who will give us insights in the collaboration between D.B. Schenker and some startups. And the next speaker has also two very exciting cases he will talk about. It's Avatar and Volocopter. Give it up for the CIO, CDO and member of the board of management at D.B. Schenker, Mr. Markus Sontheimer. Welcome everybody um, to my keynote uh, about uh, startup cooperation. Um, and um, as you know, uh, I'm working since many, many years uh, with, with uh, several startups and I, I can only tell you I have very, very good um, feelings about that and uh, mainly driven by the value uh, we generated together and uh, the way of learning from each other. Uh, now, now, we really at Schenker do that since around five years. Uh, and it really uh, is all about how does the collaboration between startups and big corporation, uh, corporations drive innovation. Um, that's exactly the point, right? Because it's as well this different view on topics, uh, which, which ultimately uh, makes a collaboration between uh, these two uh, a big success. Now, we started very early uh, in globalizing how we manage uh, innovation at DB Schenker. So we really centralized that uh, and we implemented uh, innovation managers uh, in all regions of the world and we, we established a, a global process. And we saw more and more startups, uh, you know, reaching out to us and trying to to, to collaborate. And, and uh, this only works in a company of our size if you give that a whole structured process. Uh, and that's really, really what we do. Uh, and uh, for me, it was very clear that uh, from the beginning that instead of starting to compete yeah, with startups, uh, rather thinking about how can you collaborate together uh, in, 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 in uh, fruitful partnerships and generate really uh, or value which is beneficial for both. Uh, there is this uh, young creativity uh, um, uh, and full uh, inspired of ideas and then there is this giant uh, Schenker uh, which uh, has the possibility to prove uh, if these concepts of startups uh, can work, could work or how they might need to shape their approach to really make it uh, a practical uh, use case. Um, now, what we want to do is, uh, we as Schenker, we really want to become the partner of choice uh, for startups, because uh, as you all know, partnership always starts with trust and you need to build trust. And trust comes uh, as well with some kind of positive heritage. You know, how did you work together historically? Uh, which startups make good experience with working uh, with such a big company like Schenker. And I would say we have a, a, a very successful uh, track record in that. Now, generally speaking, we have uh, no limits um, on technology what we use, right? Schenker has a, a huge uh, technology department for sure because it's so important. And uh, we really have 4,000 startups uh, on our radar. Um, and I will go in more detail in one of the next uh, slides um, how we ultimately boil it then down uh, what is usable in the logistics industry. So we're really focusing on startups uh, which are you know, working in the supply chain management uh, arena because that's exactly uh, what Schenker is all about. Now, when we are clear about the idea the startup has, we really try to find out, you know, is there any chance to find a good pilot to, to prove uh, the idea? And uh, on that area, we did dozen, dozens of uh, proof of concepts and, and we learned a lot uh, together in this proof of concepts. So the startups could shape their, their solution um, and, and we learned as well, you know, what can help us uh, going forward. Now, as Schenker, for sure, we can globally scale, right? So we are 148 years uh, um, 
in this business around the globe. We have 2,000 locations where we are working from and we have more than 700,000 customers. And so that's for sure a big chance for startups then when they go into the scaling phase of their solution to scale with us. So if it's a value generating partnership, we give them the chance uh, to scale uh, their idea and their product. Um, and again, that, that helps the startups uh, ultimately to, to make their, their idea a viable a business model. That's really good. So on the other side, for sure, uh, we, we do investments in startups. Uh, we do that uh, very often jointly uh, with the venture arm of Deutsche Bahn, but we do it uh, as Schenker as well. And I think uh, the latest examples we have, uh, like our investment in Volocopter, uh, is for sure a win-win. Uh, but for us, uh, we do that not like venture capitalists. We do that only in a strategic partnership approach, which uh, is key because our core business is uh, uh, logistics very clearly. Now, what we do in addition uh, is uh, we support startups with uh, logistics solutions. So if you're a startup and you build something physically and you want to find a partner who helps you in your supply chain management, uh, we at Schenker have absolutely specialists uh, who help. Uh, you guys to, to manage your supply chain uh, in an effective and efficient way. So that's, that's what drives us. So you see that in multiple, uh, multiple dimensions, we are interested in partnering and we have very successful example. Now, how does that look like at Schenker? You see that on the charts, right? We started with uh, the database, uh, which we build up over the years now, and uh, we have around 4,000 startups uh, in there, we have then for sure dived in detail uh, with around 1,000 startups. So, because all of these startups have been in different stages, uh, and sometimes the idea is not, you know, how you say, not not clear enough. Yeah, then it's very difficult for us to collaborate, and then we put them on the bench for the time when they are clear of what they want to do. Uh, but then we really evaluated thousands um, of these startups uh, fully. And uh, we did already then more than 90 uh, um, proof of uh, concepts with Schenker, uh, which have been very successful, uh, some of them. Uh, and in the end, today we are running around uh, 19 uh, proof of concepts in parallel. And as you see on the charts, we have already really standard operations with startup products uh, from 45 different startups. And you see some of the um, names um, on the chart. So very successful for us, uh, really generating value with these guys and for sure very successful for them having such uh, a partner and a customer uh, in the logistics space, space uh, like DB Schenker. So, so really, really um, a success story from my perspective. Uh, and uh, what we really see as well, it over the last five years, it really changed as well the culture within Schenker. Yeah? So, the company, uh, the, the warehouse managers, everybody's interested in, in, in looking uh, uh, into do some pilots, right? If this is in the kind of uh, ecological space, you know, CO2 neutral uh, trucks, um, for sure, everything around autonomous uh, stuff was very interesting. AGV technology, uh, which is still, uh, you know, in early stages and still developing, but there is a high interest, uh, even from our operational people, uh, to do uh, innovation. And uh, the same is even with our customers. Even our customers want to be uh, innovative uh, in what they do. And that's why even the customers are interested uh, uh, to, to work with us and as well piloting stuff uh, in partnership with us um, and startups we are collaborating. So really, really an important um, roadmap together uh, we, we, we had with the startups um, and let me go into more detail about some of them, right? So we talked about uh, a lot about AGVs, uh, which um, are uh, important, how they develop. In our place, uh, we are uh, collaborating uh, here um, with, with a partner around uh, this uh, and we did the pilot uh, in Leipzig uh, around with Gideon is the company 
uh, in 2019, which was very early. Uh, and and Gideon, how did we come to that pilot? We uh, did a contest, a startup contest in our headquarter in Essen, and Gideon uh, won the contest. Uh, and then uh, the prize was to do with us uh, a proof of concept. And uh, Leipzig is a huge uh, location of Schenker. Uh, with around two and a half thousand people and so we really really worked out uh, in reality how the collaboration uh, between this um, autonomous vehicles and the humans in the warehouse work and uh, this was a big success uh, because it really helps um, uh, kind of uh, to relieve uh, the workers from some kind of repetitive tasks uh, and uh, the employees then in Leipzig could really focus on the complex uh, pieces of work. So, so uh, really good solutions. Um, uh, the, the, the system can carry one and a half tons, um, which is, is massive. Um, it has a, a hot swappable battery system, which uh, enables us uh, to reduce uh, the downtimes. Uh, for, for recharging, which is great, uh, and it's a very flexible system. And ultimately, we need to integrate that uh, into um, our warehouse uh, systems, and, and that's easy, easily possible. And uh, so we're really proud about that partnership, um, and uh, I think a big success uh, for, for Gideon and Schenk uh, in the collaboration uh, which, with each other. So really, really good. Now, Another big and very, I would say, uh, well-known partnership Schenker embarked on was the partnership with Volocopter. So when I met uh, first time in Munich uh, the, 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 the young management team and they explained their idea, what they want to do uh, with uh, the so-called Volo drone project, which is a cargo drone. And uh, I was always skeptical about drones and say, oh, do I, where is the value if you need to lift weight? That's uh, from a, from an energy need just doesn't sound so so uh, easy. Yeah, but when they came with the concept of saying, you know, we really can lift uh, up to 200 kilo, that makes it interesting uh, for the B2B logistics industry uh, in which we are in. So that's what we did. Uh, so we looked at it. We we worked out uh, is there joint use cases. So we really helped. Uh, a volocopter to shape uh, the used cases for the volo drone. Uh, we, we collaborate with them, we help them to shape the product in a way that it can be used um, in the logistics industry. And for sure, it's not that we are the only going to be the customer. No, it will be then an available product uh, uh, for, for, for everybody uh, who has a use case for it. But uh, you can imagine this is really, really on the forefront. Um, of, um, of logistics uh, with zero emission electric uh, drones um, and uh, we really see a lot of use cases especially as well in the onshore offshore co collaboration in countries where you have a lot of islands around uh, so there is big chances um, for, for the Volo drone uh, to generate uh, a real value so a, a really strong partnership uh, we embarked on uh, with the uh, Volocopter team. Now, the other one we have is uh, Avatar. Uh, Avatar as well, um, something very, very special. It's a platform where you can really uh, in life visit uh, uh, locations. And in our case, it's uh, we use that to visit our warehouses. Yeah? So and that's not only because of the pandemic, it was value adding, it's a general kind of effortless uh, ability to show your customers what you're capable about. So for us as Schenker, showing some customers our high-tech warehouses, what we use, how that works, and inviting them to virtually visit a warehouse is, is an important thing. It's all about, again, building trust for customers, uh, what we are able to do, and doing that in a way that you don't need to travel uh, makes it firstly economically Interesting, uh, interesting as well from an ecological point of view. So, a really good partnership uh, with Avatar, um, and I think they could shape their product as well. And they learned uh, a lot uh, in this collaboration uh, with us. Now, generally speaking, uh, what is the future focus uh, we will have in logistics? Which, in the end, you can see as a 
uh, a kind of idea uh, where startups should focus on, uh, you see that on the chart here. So it's really about uh, new work. I think uh, for us, another area we are focusing on. So how does new work look like uh, when it comes to mobile, hybrid workplaces, creativity spaces, training, collaboration, uh, work and tools, still something uh, where not everything is invented yet. I really believe uh, a place which we will focus on. Uh, still the, the whole kind of platforms uh, we are working in our digital strategy around that. We are launching own products for sure. But even in that space, uh, always good for startups to have a look at. Is there something uh, in it, you know, platform as a service, uh, kind of uh, an important, uh, good, scalable business models around that. A lot of stuff we have done, uh, but uh, this is a permanent area of innovation. New mobility and sustainability is very clearly a space uh, where we are focusing on um, AI and data analytics and hyper automation, something uh, which needs to be addressed uh, as well. The human machine interaction in interplay, absolutely key uh, for us. We are, we, are, we are doing that. We trained nearly thousand people uh, in 2020 on artificial intelligence to get the awareness uh, spread across Schenker. And for sure, we are focusing on the new business models, which we are embarking on. If this is our visibility platform, IoT, connect to track sensors and software as a service, as a business model. So I hope uh, you have an impression about uh, what Schenker is doing in the startup space in collaboration. It makes a lot of fun. It generates uh, uh, tons of value, I can tell you, measurable value. And if you are interested in uh, joining and contacting DB Schenker, please uh, send an email to startup at dbschenker.com and the team is happy uh, to start collaborating with you. See you then. Bye-bye. Thanks to our anchor partner, DB Schenker. Thank you, Mr. Sontheimer. Yeah, being responsible for a quarter of EU's CO2 emission, the transport sector is under great pressure. We need solutions. We need solutions to lower its carbon footprint and to achieve the EU's goal of being carbon neutral by 2050. It's a great challenge, but it's also a great opportunity. Let's focus on that topic together with our Plug and Play Hamburg's Partner Success Manager, Claudius Lascavi. Thank you, Dorothy. You know, these startups were actually already highly relevant before COVID became a reality for all of us. However, the global pandemic clearly accelerated the speed at which these technologies and solutions were adopted. The need for virtual tools and technologies enabling all of us to collaborate, especially in times of permanent home office, as well as an advanced understanding of environmental and biological factors were certainly the key drivers here. So, Let's take a closer look at how our corporate partners and startups join the approach and tackle these emerging opportunities. But first, our startups will introduce themselves. Um, we're a software and technology business that helps corporates uh, monitor and manage their carbon footprint. In particular, we support companies that are on their own journey towards being a net zero organization. So we are expert in pairing the data that our clients have inside of their ERP system, such as their procurement and invoice data, and pair that with the right uh, environmental data and the latest environmental research. We're a Swedish company working with enterprise visualization. We solve companies' needs of explaining difficult or problematic product solutions or processes. Avatour is the remote collaboration platform designed for on-site visits. We use a unique 360 capture technology that allows the remote users to see the entire context of a real-world space in real time, so they can get the job done without travel for the first time. Our platform for um, uh, industrial processes automation uh, is, is essentially building solutions with small building blocks. Um, which can be reused and replaced and customized 
CineHub is um, a digital platform uh, where we provide maritime industries various uh, indicators, uh, environmental indicators, logistic indicators that help them to take data-driven decision. Tailspin helps clients and partners use immersive technology to drive hard skills training results. We do this across a variety of use cases, from inspection and safety training to installation, maintenance, and repair. With Enetwise, we found a partner who can help us and our customers to measure the exact CO2 footprint. That is important for us because by 2050 or sooner, we will become a net zero emissions company, taking also into account the emissions of our customers. Our secret sauce uh, the Matewise is uh, provided by our deep expertise in both carbon accounting and carbon management and artificial intelligence. And we are able to collect data from vast supply chains across a multitude of industries. Thanks to virtual reality, learning can be thought differently. In aviation, our workers can now learn in a safe and secure environment with virtual reality. This minimizes the risk of injuries. And the fact that we can save cost, time and energy are very nice side effects. We want to revolutionize learning and training in our company. And we want to do that quickly. That is the reason for our cooperation with Tailspin. We're excited to be working with Shell to continue to realize the impact of XR learning and to explore new use cases in the aviation space together. So in our global network, we have hundreds of logistics uh, sites located globally all over the world. And for sure, all of them, we need regular visit. We like to show it to our customers. And when the pandemic happened, uh, we simply stopped to do that because it was impossible due to travel restrictions. So we decided to ask ourselves how we can still proceed to visit Tivishenko sites, but in very safe way, remotely, to keep our colleagues safe as well, but still interactively. For this particular set challenge, we were searching a solution which will be easy to implement, easy to use on all of our sites globally. So our collaboration with DB Schenker um, came about through really a single individual, um, a guy named Leo Donatelli out of uh, their facility in Ontario outside Toronto, who needed to keep doing tours of his facility post pandemic. And he um, started looking all over the place for potential solutions. He found us online and uh, we got him a, uh, a kit and he started using it. And then we got a phone call from Germany uh, where we, uh, someone from BB Schenker asked if they could do a demo and if they could, we could send some headsets. We sent some headsets and it turned out the demo was for the entire board and the entire Schenker AG board put on headsets and went on a tour of this um, facility uh, outside Toronto. I think one of the challenges that uh, uh, we have is just getting uh, accurate uh, count of uh, cargo being loaded and unloaded uh, while in operations. And uh, to do that, uh, we kind of engaged with uh, Blinko to see that if we could put uh, these uh, uh, cameras on our vessel ramp and just automate and digitize that whole process, what our task was is to put a camera at the bridge at the entrance into a Roro ship and then kind of uh, count the cars and other cargo that's coming in. And uh, in the future, we would like to extend that so we can also uh, automatically scan um, codes from cars and also like check them in uh, with their code. At ports and terminals, one of the big challenges is just knowing uh, the congestion status, uh, kind of, and that is a big challenge. And it, so that uh, is a problem statement uh, which we had when we were working with Sinai. That how do we kind of get a better visibility of port congestion at a birth level uh, between us and the various carriers that are coming to that particular port? 
So at Cine, we help them to have a better view of the port congestions, uh, the competitors' uh, intention, and by this way, they can better manage their, their, their fleet and optimize it regarding uh, uh, the port congestions and waiting time. Flag and Play has helped us be more successful by exposing our company to relevant partners. And we have started some really exciting partnerships. Plug and Play has helped Anamek making contacts with the potential clients in Europe that are interested in our product offering. Thanks, Claudius. Thanks to everybody for these insights. And everybody out there, don't forget our chat function. We want interaction. Send us your feedback, your questions, everything you like to share with us. So use the chat. It's not interactive if you don't. And there you can see what's next. We're about to start our panel, which you should not miss. Yeah, what does almost every company have on its agenda, right? It's innovation. And the world is changing faster than ever. New disruptive technologies and concepts are entering the industry. And that's why companies need different resources to stay relevant. The best way to foster innovation is the collaboration between huge corporates and startups. And also the COVID pandemic made everything, yeah, let's say, not easier. Let's focus on that topic in our panel and for that, I'd like to give the floor to Plug and Play's Director of Partnerships in Hamburg, Niki Ipekci. Hello, Niki. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. I welcome you also from my side uh, to today's panel of our Supply Chain Europe Expo. My name is Niki Ipekci. As Dorothy said, I'm the Director of Partnerships. And I'm super excited for today's topic about corporate startup collaboration, which is the sweet sauce also of plug and play means my daily work. And um, I'm, I'm excited to have three brilliant speakers and um, I would like to introduce to you to our panel topic, but also our speakers. So the world is changing faster than ever and uh, we all see disruptive technologies around the world and they're coming from corporates but also startups and we see a lot of collaborations but how does collaboration is actually functioning what are the challenges but also the opportunities this is today's topic and with that i welcome you stephanie Bia from um, emmetwise our com commercial director of emmetwise um, I'm super happy to have a woman on the panel as well next to me because uh, she knows we had a briefing beforehand, we were talking and it's not easy, um, but it's common, more common. And I'm, I'm especially excited about Stephanie because uh, with Emmetwise, they're pushing business leaders to take responsibility of their carbon footprint. And that's not just to make it possible to fight against climate change, but to make it even profitable. So stay tuned about that. Um, Jörg Debos, super excited to have you, CDO and Hydrogen Director and also Chief of Staff of Shell Germany. You can imagine these were challenging times the past year, but um, he made it to inspire not his own organization only, but also us at Plug and Play and to keep us positive. Um, he's a strong, um, driven digital person and um, changing and transforming the whole um, organization. I'm very honored that he's doing that also at Plug and Play um, Supply Chain Europe, uh, headquartered in Hamburg, where Jörg is also sitting. So welcome, Jörg, also. And last but not least, Ralph Belusa, CDO and Managing Director of Hapag Lloyd. Um, he is the man when it comes to digital business and transformation. And um, he's also the member of Supervisory Board at Phoenix Group with more than 12,000 employees in over 144 countries. So imagine it's an international challenge. He steers the logistics giant Harpak Lloyd into the digital future, and I'm excited to listen more about how he does. So Ralph, I would like to stay and continue with you to talk about startup corporate collaboration. We talked beforehand already um, in order to collaborate with somebody else when it comes to innovation, but also in general, 
you need to have a basic foundation, right? A basic structure and you, the whole organization need to be educated. So how must the organization be structured in order to be able to work successfully with startups, for example, but generally to innovate? Yeah, thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you very much for the invitation and a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a good question how we can uh, startups and corporates together and therefore we need a couple of foundations and that's uh, from both sides. So not only the startup or the uh, corporate needs to uh, connect to each other. Um, so the corporates, they need to have the foundation like some, some kind of agile work, some kind of transparency, some kind of uh, rhythmic planning if it's two-week sprints or four-week sprints and so on. On the other side, um, also the startups need a bit more the understanding also from the corporate um, environments, how corporates are working. But last but not least, the most important point is that both sides allocate uh, colleagues who are able to work and have the freedom and the resource and the time to work on, to collaborate together. And that's a, that's a critical point. It's one part, probably sometimes the money, but in the end, it's really that colleagues can work together, have a goal together and enough time uh, to really, as we always know that, build, measure, learn, to make failures, do that again. And therefore the startup, but also the corporate need that freedom um, to be successful here. Thank you, Ralph. Um, so we talked, you talked about um, understanding. Um, Stephanie, I would like to jump to you. Um, I love actually the philosophy of Emmett Weiss saying driven by data, inspired by the planet and saying making the fight, as I said already in the intro, against climate change, not just possible, but profitable. I can imagine that this means collaboration in your daily work as well. So uh, what do you think? Why is actually collaboration key in today's economy, especially in your industry? And also, what are the biggest challenges um, that some of them, Ralph, already pointed out? I mean, I think that, you know, when you're coming at climate change, you need to understand, unfortunately, that not everyone's an eco warrior. Right. So, you know, we have a team of people who, you know, are obviously very, very mission driven and the business itself is very mi mission driven, you know. Um, and so while we can't lead with always the mission and assuming that everyone really understands the impact of climate change, the collaboration or rather the way that we work with businesses is to really have them understand what their carbon exposure is and also how to reduce it. Because today it's actually the cost of doing business. So it's the only way that businesses can really stay alive, right? The clock is ticking. Um, it's the single biggest humanitarian issue that the world has ever faced, but also it affects everything um, in a business, right? And it's really about have education. Um, and that's, I guess, for us, the collaboration bit. It's, it's educating every different stakeholder and how, you know, um, not only does it affect employee retention and acquisition, it affects investment, it affects consumer demands and so on. So it really kind of impacts every part of the business. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, maybe with that topic, education within the organization to you, Jörg, I, I witnessed very um, close how you and your team at Shell were transforming the organization, not just in regard to innovation, but also in your core business uh, with new business models. So what does it need from your perspective to be ready to cooperate with external companies, for example, startups? especially from your leadership perspective, right? Um, how do you educate um, uh, your whole organization when it's so big? <laughs> well, and, and that's an interesting one. Uh, thanks, Nikki. Well, um, well, if I reflect on my own personal style, it's a le leading from the front, so, so just showcases. And, and this is all about mindset. And uh, maybe some big companies uh, may forget they have been small when they, in the early day, and, and and while they're getting bigger and bigger, they may have lost something. Uh, so and and this is what we need to have back. Uh, so we need to have this curiosity, this mindset. We we need to change a few things, uh, but we also need to have this mutual rec respect. So big companies can of course do a lot of stuff, but we also need the small ones, uh, and the combination is uh, is maybe uh, uh, the miracle here. So and, and therefore, I'm very keen to have this cooperation because the task we are heading to and, and Stephanie just uh, mentioned uh, climate change, the only way to solve that one is together. So this is all about team sport. 
it's not just one company can do this. And the other element is, and uh, Shavali, we talked about this briefly uh, last week, uh, and that's the reason why I like your proposal here. <laughs> if you want to improve it, measure it. Most people have no idea what's their footprint. So, and, and when they measure the data, they say, oops, <laughs> what I'm doing now. So, but that's good because then the conversation starts. Uh, and um, there's another element uh, I would like to share with you is change before you have to. If we wait too long, we have an even bigger problem. So I think it's already relatively late for the challenge we are heading to. Thank you so much, Jörg. Um, I, I think you, you mentioned very important um, criteria, mindset and mutual respect, right? Uh, when, when, you, when you're stepping to one table. Um, also, you, Ralph, mentioned in our conversation that we had all together before, something um, that stick to my mind. You said it cannot be done with a hammer. It's actually you're reinventing and, and it, it needs to happen in a natural habit. So to also a little bit um, encourage our, our participants today, um, how do you actually do that within your organization at Hapak Lloyd when it comes to IT transformation? You had a whole long journey behind yourself and I think there's partly some of it coming um, uh, also. But um, how are you restructuring this corporate identity in a natural habit? Mm -hmm. That's that's a good question. As as Jörg mentioned, with the mindset, uh, that's really a, a one a very important point to have that positive mindset to see that openness, not being anxious, trying out the new things, learn the new things. Because you only get anxious if you don't know enough, or you you. You need to step into the topic, learn from that, try to adapt uh, and use that. And that's really helping even to come along with, with new projects or trying out that new things. But also uh, what I would like to highlight are the collaboration also between the startups and the corporates. Um, everybody needs to understand clearly where and how to work here together with that positive mindset. Most of all, it's work, working with startups, it's focusing on the technology. That's one part, but that's not all. The other side is that, that the startup has interesting custo uh, interesting customer base or, or an interesting product, or it's about they work different, then it's more an educational topic, or as a corporate, you see that more under an M&A or uh, under the financial view. So you have four different views how you work together from a customer perspective, from a technology perspective, from an education perspective, or from a financial perspective. And if this is clear for both parties, then you can collaborate much easier because I see many companies and startups struggling because it's a mixture between everything. And so it's not 100% clear. Do we want the technology, the customer, the education? It's a financial case. Uh, and therefore, also with the positive mindset, not with a hammer, it's, it's working together. Find a, a uh, with courage, with uh, collaboration, being confident, finding therefore a good solution how to integrate it. And therefore there are some kind of transparency frameworks and so on, where you always show the next step, talk about the next steps and then also do the next step. Thank you, Ralph. Um, it actually, you, you said, yeah, to make everything actually clear, to discuss clearly through those four dimensions that you just defined, Stephanie, um, you're coming from, from a perspective where you know how a startup feels when you're growing and, and cooperating with, with um, uh, different uh, companies. Uh, from my perspective also, I often witness how two parties are actually coming together. They, they try to work as fast as possible, but often they forget to ask those questions that Ralph just mentioned from the very beginning to know what they want actually to do and what would they to take out of that uh, collaboration. So I would be interested, which questions do we need to solve before we collaborate? So we have a successful collaboration. Um, and I think your perspective is here very essential. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's the, the difficult part with what Ralph just said is that's exactly what we have to deal with on a daily basis. And this is my third tech business. So, um, you know, you have to speak the language of every stakeholder. And what that means is that there's the education piece, there's the financial piece, there's all these different things. And that's really hard, right? In a small business, it means that, you know, I need to understand 
how a CFO is going to respond to something, but I also need to understand how, you know, the CMO is going to respond to something and they're coming at it with a very different aspect. And so, you know, for us, it really is actually doing a huge amount of work to understand the personas. So, so I would say that's the first piece of work is doing a huge piece of like, you know, what do these, what matters to all of these stakeholders, understanding who within those businesses actually hold the budget and will be the end decision maker for um, a specific solution, right? Because financial solution is not going to be the CMO who's going to decide. However, you know, something relating to carbon, for example, actually affects how you market yourself, but it also affects your bottom line, right? So that actually touches every part of the business. Um, so I would say, you know, you that's that's the first piece of work in order to have kind of impact and make sure that you're really um, intentional with getting like uh, what the pain points you're solving, but also the deliverables. Unfortunately, you know, my experience sometimes, this is the bad side of sometimes working with corporates is they want everything, right? They want to see everything and they want everything as fast as possible. And so as a startup, everyone scrambles, puts together the most amazing, you know, piece of work or proposal or whatever that might be. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, actually, we've chosen to go a different path. We put the project on hold. Um, priorities have <laughs> You know, and so for us, time is, so, is, is you know, it's our capital. Um, and so I think that really being able to do that kind of education piece for ourselves um, ahead of kind of pushing forward and doing all that work that might not get to anywhere is, is hugely important. And I see Raf and, and Jörg smiling and laughing. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just seeing Jörg just also starting saying something. Feel free, Jörg. Yeah, it, it, it is uh, spot on. Uh, and it starts, what's the problem we want to solve? Do we have the same understandings? Uh, so the question I'm uh, always giving uh, my team is uh, the famous Spice Girl question. You may not know that one, but tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Yeah, <laughs> and that always helps because uh, very often we are not clear what's the problem we want to solve here and, and what are the resources, right? And you just uh, <laughs> described it very nicely because time is one resource, but it's also budget money. So, and, and if we as a corporate uh, push you in the wrong direction and say, ah, no, sorry, that's not fair. So, so, so and, and, and that's back to respect. So the other element is um, you need to, have, as a startup, you need to have the freedom to solve these solutions or, uh, or come up with good solutions. And, and we shouldn't overwhelm you with, with all the stuff we're having as a corporate. And at some point of time, we need this. If I just think about cybersecurity, this is a very serious one. But if you want to have it super saved right from the beginning, yeah, innovation is slow. So, and, and, and to find the sweet spot here is, is a difficult one. Also, how to integrate then a, a startup into a corporate to give the startup the freedom to act. Because if it's in the corporate, woof, you may lose a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's that's true. And um, I, I believe we witnessed it as, as well, but it's a learning process, right? So. So we all we all are in the same boat actually. But um, Jörg, I, I would like to stay um, with you because as Stephanie mentioned, um, the climate change may, mentioned um, that we need to tackle that together. Uh, why do you think also from Shell's perspective that uh, collaboration in that regard is so important? And I know because you actually came, I remember the first day you came uh, to our office, you were like, guys, we need to open up and uh, oh, because the plug and play is an open innovation platform. And I was so impressed. Uh, I, I learned uh, Shell in such a different way. So um, yeah, I, I would like you maybe, to specify. Maybe it's that. just all about perceptions. Uh, how do you see Shell? Most people say, well, that's a retail site. Well, yeah. it's actually a bit more. <laughs> so, and, 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 and Shell is fully co committed to deliver a, a net zero emission. A lot of people are talking that, and you can mm. see, read this in the sustainability report. And therefore, Stephanie's work is so important because first of all, they can realize, okay, what's my footprint? And um, then, sorry for the wording, then the oh shit moment happens. Oops, what I'm doing now? A and then you realize, coming to your question, I cannot solve this alone. This is too big. This is too complicated. We need to do this together. And that's the reason why we actually as Shell joint plug and play logistic, because you have the right partners. So the, uh, 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 like uh, Ralph's company, uh, we need to work together. We need to, to, to create a new standard, a new understanding. Uh, and we also need to come up with a solution and, and define or, or create critical mass here and then to grow it fast. Uh, and that the only way to make it happen is work together. It's a it, energy transition is a team sport. 
and finger pointing doesn't help at all. So it's let's be open, let's be creative, but we also be very clear this is a very difficult one. Thank you so much. I like that motivational ending. <laughs> um, Ralph, maybe because we, we talked now a little bit about energy, um, where do you see the biggest opportunity for your industry, for ocean carriers to co cooperate with startups, so to integrate different technologies external? I think that's, that has multiple entry points uh, to collaborate here with uh, startups because as a huge company, you have uh, financial aspects, you have HR aspects, you have the ships, you have the ports, you have the goods, you have the con uh, customers. So there are so many entry points where you can collaborate uh, with, with startups or great tools in the HR area or on the financial part. Or even some, some companies, you know, from, from coating, from coating from the ships to have uh, lower emissions and so on there. So there are so many things happening also in, in combination with artificial intelligence, with route optimization, with uh, um, uh, truck load and the mode of to, uh, the transport um, optimization and so on. So this goes on and on. And that means also for all startups and to collaborate, there are endless opportunities and endless things where we can work on. So it's not that it's, there is no work, there is, super cool stuff um, happening and where we can collaborate with uh, all the different um, companies. And also as Stephanie and Jörg mentioned, there's really, we are working in a global supply chain in a global world uh, and we all work in some kind together. So it's not like, mm, I don't have to do something with that. That's mostly not the case. Yeah, You're just right. that one, in, in most cases, we are uh, also customer and supplier in the same way. So we exactly. are the client of your company uh, and the other way around. So, uh, and then we already, already realize, oh, we are already in this together. So let's yeah. use that. Exactly. That's a super relevant point. You mentioned, uh, Jörg, um, industry standards, and we are actually in it already together. So maybe Stephanie, from your perspective, being in this industry uh, also for a longer time, and I was so happy to hear that it, you, you actually uh, ended up doing your passion uh, every day. So uh, <laughs> um, it, witnessing that, uh, how do you think, um, how can we improve setting industry standards and coming to that point, seeing bigger uh, companies, but also smaller companies, but really concentrating on the technology and on the industry standards how can we get there to set industry standards to collaborate so where do we should uh, improve what do you think that's a difficult question um <laughs> i think you just start at the beginning right i mean i think that there's a lot of industries that are kind of putting out signals right like what Jorg is saying and what ralph is saying that are very open to collaboration and so i think that if you start with the ones that are i don't want to call them the low-hanging fruit but the ones who are open right then you can send industry industry standards together right i mean i think that if you start with anything that's incredibly complicated then you're not going to succeed and i think it's really yeah. about kind of having this open mind and, and really doing the right research or, or really kind of um, using the networks that you have in order to form this collaboration, which will then inform future roadmaps and playbooks for what good collaboration looks like between, you know, huge, um, you know, corporate companies um, that, or, or like, you know, or what Ralph was saying before, when you kind of look at his business and it's just, you know, there's so much that you can do. And, um, and also I would recommend kind of starting small, right? Like, there's so much that you can do and it's what's the kind of first step, what's the quick win, and then how do you replicate that throughout these businesses and then how do you replicate that throughout the wider market? Thank it's you, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. testing being a role model, but not just as one company. If you can combine uh, the critical mass of a few companies and they're acting in the same way, you actually have the standard. Yeah. And I think that's a huge opportunity we're having in this group. Uh, uh, we all have the same interests. And the only thing in brackets, we need to talk to each other, have a clear understanding what do we really want, and then just do it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I really agree. And um, talking about we need to make things transparent. Um, uh, we have uh, in Hamburg an initiative, which I'm really happy because I'm, I was born and raised in Hamburg and, and I'm happy to see that we have initiatives like the Future Hamburg Award, uh, right? I know Jörg and um, you, Ralph, are also judges at um, this initiative. 
Um, uh, why do you think that these vehicles and formats to really attract technology um, is necessary and how do you believe could that help? Mm -hmm. I, I really love the, the opportunity of the Future Hamburg Award because it's, it's connecting the right people together with the right mindset but also with the right infrastructure and also a lot of uh, power and insights and in a lovely city as Hamburg, that's, that's the beauty spot. So it's, it's wonderful to have that here in one place uh, and uh, can really, the startups and also with the award, we can change here uh, things. Yeah. Jörg, I think you agree. You are, you are yeah, well, I, I'm from Hamburg as well. So I'm biased on this one, of course. But, right. but uh, if you go back into history, and I mentioned it earlier, uh, this is for centuries, the center of logistic. Yeah. And it's a gate to the world, how we call Hamburg, towards the world. So, uh, but we cannot stand still. So it's all here, but we have to do this. Uh, uh, and therefore, I'm really looking forward. Uh, uh, and again, we have the big corporates, we have all the connections, but we need input. We need young, bright people, young startups. Come up with your ideas and let's have a look. Thank you so much. And also, maybe to all the participants viewing now, you can still apply if you're interested, if you're a startup until end of this March, March 31st. Uh, if you have any questions, we have Veronika Reichboat from the city of Hamburg representing um, at our networking area, expo area in the booth, um, Hamburg Invest. So please join us there afterwards. Um, I don't wanna miss one topic. It's about inclusion and diversity when we talk about collaboration. And um, I know you, Stephanie, are a strong advocate when it comes to women in tech. What do you think maybe does it need um, to still ensure that we have inclusion diversity? Or let's, let me say, um, uh, can you maybe share with us a personal experience how you got there where you are also? And encourage uh, some women out there viewing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's, it's really important. Um, you know, this is the first, like if I look at my mother, for example, you know, that generation wasn't, you know, encouraged to work, right? I feel very privileged that like my generation has, you know, uh, been encouraged to have these careers, but we are the first kind of generation doing it. And so we need to really kind of make every extra effort that we can to have representation. Um, and so, you know, if I look at, uh, you know, different businesses that I've worked in, you know, that hasn't been true. However, here at EmitWise, for example, we have representation in every team. Um, you know, we have women in engineering, we have women leading actually carbon accounting, we have, you know, women in marketing and sales and in product. Um, you know, and women and men definitely come at problems and solutions with very different approaches, right? And so actually enabling this kind of cohesive collaboration is what a business needs to be successful and really encouraging that. So, um, you know, and the other thing is, is, is about creating the community, which was what I said before. And, and it's about having women in leadership positions that can actually support the diversity. Um, unfortunately, there are women who can actually be terribly toxic and keep other women down. Um, Jörg is laughing. So is Ralph. Um, so, you know, and it's something that we've all seen that we've experienced that a lot of the women that I work with and have worked with have experienced themselves. And so really kind of making sure that you're seeding that out and removing that culture as fast as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I've created a female community group within EmitWise um, to make sure that essentially everyone has a voice and feels like they're heard. Um, you know, I'm obviously a woman in sales, so maybe I'm a bit more forthcoming with my ideas than maybe a woman in another part of the business. So it's really enabling that um, and encouraging them to have to have that voice and integrating that into the into the business. Thank you yeah, so much. Me, but if, if I may uh, add a point, and we need to start early. So, uh, so the girls need to learn that tech is fun. So, yeah. so and a friend of mine is, uh, 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 has a small company uh, and, and they are doing robotics for kids. And they just recently had a, a, a robotics just for girls in the age of 10 to 14. Uh, uh, so it was a secure place and they really loved it. And, uh, and, I, I, and I really liked that proposal because if the kids are not have an interest in tech, how can they go to the university? How can we use them as engineers, as female engineers? So we need to start very early uh, and ensure when you're a girl, uh, there are so many opportunities, but start early. I agree. 
Thank you so much. I need to come slowly to an end. Um, I, I don't want to interrupt you, Ralph, if you want to give a last uh, statement on that as well, but um, I would like to close the round afterwards. All good. I'm really looking forward to uh, work with all of you together. So it doesn't mind if men, women, whatever. It's good to work together with all the different kinds of experience because that's really uh, making our world bright and great working together. Thank you so much, Ralph. Also, we have our initiative Found Her, where we are actually supporting um, uh, female founders, uh, also in our booth with Leila representing it right from Silicon Valley. So feel free to join. With that, I would like to thank you, Jörg, Ralph and Stephanie for being today with us and you, our participants. Thank you so much for dialing in and being part of our Supply Chain Europe journey here. And with that, I give over back to Dorothy. Thank you so much. I can hear the applause. <laughs> so everybody, let's go on. We have now the unique opportunity to listen to five individual lightning talks from our corporate partners. How do their priorities look like? What projects are they working on? The answers will follow. And I will start with the DB Schenker, our partner, um, and an executive lightning talk about logistics is more than you expect. That's the topic. And I'd like to hand over to Erik Bersing. Let's go. Hello, everyone. My name is Erik, Erik Bersing. I'm Vice President Global Innovation at DB Schenker. And as you can see, I'm also sitting and working from home since roughly one year already. So quite a long time and challenging times for all of us. But today I wanted to give you some more insights about our current situation as a logistics company, what is driving us, what kind of challenges do we have to tackle, and of course, what kind of new trends, technologies and opportunities do we see out there and where we do have to put our focus on. So therefore, logistics is more than you may expect. Let's start with some challenges. And of course, the current situation, the current time, the pandemic is one of the major drive of all of our thoughts of all of our operation of our business contacts and uh, because we are here as logistic professional we are always sitting somehow between the chairs we have to deal with different customer segments with different countries with different regulations and also we have a big big uh, let's say responsibility for our own employees and when it comes to the customer context of course we also need ideas solutions opportunities how to bring the shipments in the best ways in the most secure way to our customers. So the pandemic is a huge topic that is driving all of us. And I think at the moment we have done it as an industry quite good and being as agile as possible and to really bring up new ideas and opportunities. But that's not everything what's driving us at the moment. Of course, we have a huge lack of personnel. Maybe you don't know, but the, the average age of a truck driver, so professional truck driver in Germany at the moment is around 57 to 58. So quite old at the moment. So therefore, we really have to find opportunities to make this kind of job profile a little bit more agile or to find other possibilities to bring the shipments even in the future from A to B. So it's not that we want to get rid of all of our truck drives and therefore logistics industry is focusing on autonomous driving or something like that. Absolutely not. We would love to hire even more truck drivers, but there are not enough out there. So therefore, we have to tackle with these kind of new technologies to really integrate them into our operations. And maybe last thing as a challenge that might be that I would like to mention is the topic of sustainability in comparison also with the diesel driving vans. We as an industry are tackling plenty of these challenges and we have in the whole Europe, roughly 20, 25 cities who will close their doors completely for diesel trucks. So that's a big issue for us because we have to drive into the urban environment. And as we all know, urban environments are growing. Even, even more people are living there. But if we are, as logistics industry, are not allowed to drive any longer into that urban environment, we have to find alternatives. That might be electromobility. That might be even better and more interesting for us. It's also hydrogen, but also cargo bike solutions or tunnel concepts, cargo drone delivery, whatever. So we need alternatives. Because in the ne very near future, we are not allowed to drive any longer with diesel trucks into the urban environment. So, and all alternatives are welcome and there are plenty of great startups out there that we know already. But all industries and all ideas 
that might be helping us to fulfill the demands of our customers are more than welcome. When it comes to some focus areas where we believe that will be a topic for this year and for the upcoming years, of course, there's the topic of co-working and uh, co-working possibilities. Because now from our 75,000 people at Schenker, we have roughly 28, 29,000 people sitting at home and working from home. So we really have to find and have to establish new office possibilities, how to be, let's say, attractive for our talents, for our colleagues, that they are, let's say, motivated to come back. So it's getting a little bit rid of the one person, one desk philosophy and opening up more creative environment, more areas where people really love to meet each other. Because when we are in the office, then we should use this time as productive as possible to interact and to cooperate with people. But of course, when it comes to utilization of our mobility, then we need, as I said before, electromobility ideas. We need cargo bikes, we need hydrogen, we need heavy lifted cargo drones. And we really need alternatives to really have a big focus on this kind of delivery and pickup topics for urban environment and also for the long distance. So therefore, sustainability is a big, big driver for us. And we really believe that must be and that will be a part of our DNA, that we as a logistics industry have a big focus on that topic. But there are even more technologies out there like AI, like big data, like um Drones like 5G, like blockchain, they all are influencing our business. And we really want to understand, is there something in us for us as an industry? Is it a chance? Is it a threat? Is it an opportunity to establish even better services for our customers? Therefore, the biggest driver for us is as well to establish new services, new business models for our customers, because that's the purpose why we are there as a logistics industry, to help our customers to fulfill their demands and to really be there even in the future. So therefore, our topic and belief is that startups are the perfect fit here for plenty of use cases because they have dedicated focus on dedicated topics. We are extreme, extremely happy to cooperate and we do that already. So we know more than four and a half thousand startups already and we integrated more than 50, 60 startups already as supplier, as partner, but as well as customer into our operations and really helping them to grow and helping um, helping us to speed up. Therefore, if you're a startup with a cool idea that might be supportive, helpful for our operation, for our business needs, just knock on our door, send us an email to startup, startups at dbschengel.com and we are happy to have a chat with you if that makes sense. If we have, an, let's say, an idea how to integrate you, where we can test you and to really look into the future together. So we really love startups and I wish you a fantastic conversation and a fantastic meeting. Hope to see you all soon and the most important thing, stay healthy. Bye bye. Our lightning talk number two, let's go on with number three. Let's focus on the innovation strategy of DSV. Be prepared for an interview with CCO of DSV, René Feich Olesen and our Claudius from Plug and Play. Thank you very much. Um, today with us is the Group Chief Commercial Officer of, of DSV, René falsch -Olesen. Hi, René. Hi, Claudius. Thank you for joining. Um, and I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the setup of uh, DSV in terms of innovation. So my first question to you would be, what are some innovation areas you'll be focusing on in the next couple of months? Yeah, in, in the next uh, couple of months, uh, years, decades, uh, it's hard to say, but, uh, but we will continuously focus on, uh, on areas such as supply chain visibility, which is an area that uh, uh, is extraordinarily important for, for our customers and therefore also for us. I think it's becoming uh, even more prevalent why it's important to have uh, full supply chain visibility with the uh, pandemic that's currently ongoing and, and the challenges in our industry. And then uh, in general, uh, anything to do with uh, automation, whether it's automation in, in, uh, in, in processes within the back office, uh, whether, it's, uh, uh, whether it's automation within warehousing as well, that's uh, extremely important. And then uh, just to pick, uh, pick a third one, uh, also uh, I'd be looking at uh, areas around green logistics as well. Uh, uh, CO2 improvements is, uh, is, is key to a lot of the things that we are doing, working with customers on optimizing. And, uh, and, and I believe that's a big area that we, uh, we will just see more of in the future as well. 
Green has certainly picked up as a, as a significant trend recently. And um, we've also heard that there are some early initiatives at DSV. So very excited about that. Um, but how do you usually work with startups? Do you develop proof of concepts and pilots with them? Do you acquire them? Do you invest in them? What's your way to go about this at DSV? The, the, the way we typically uh, approach it is that we have what we call the, uh, the innovation hub in, uh, in DSV and that team uh, works with uh, ideas that come from our organization. So we tend to get input from the organization. We get input from, uh, from what we call the tech radar as well to say which new technologies, uh, which new challenges do we see in, in our business and how can we improve. Uh, then, then we uh, deliberately, because uh, in a big organization, whether we have a flat structure or not, uh, it still takes time to test uh, things. So we set up between uh, what we call global IT and, and my uh, commercial organization, we set this team up uh, for the innovation hub. And what we allow ourselves to do in there is to actually uh, not uh, prejudge too much. We look for use case uh, for, for technology. Uh, then we, uh, we try... Um, to go through a process of a pre-to-type, uh, prototype pilot, and then uh, launching of the product in, in, you can say in the real world as uh, rolling it out to realize not only the use case, but also realize the business case as a consequence. And we, we feel that we have a way of working uh, in this way that allows us to actually move uh, fairly quickly uh, uh, through the process to actually realize is there a business case for this solution, yes or no. If we get to that, then it gets more complex. Then you need to get into all the uh, the rules and regulations that we have to apply as a business uh, within our operations. But that, that, that's how we uh, we uh, we operate it. Having having a proper um, business case in place is certainly very very important. But there are also things that you can offer, um, so startups can complement uh, DSV's already global network. So what is it that you can specifically offer to startups as DSV? Yeah, I think uh, maybe I should have mentioned it before. What we look at is, is in general, uh, we look at what we call the use case or the, uh, or the challenge that we have, and then we look for solutions. That's where we use plug and play, for instance, to scour the market of saying, are there available solutions out there? Are there startups uh, that can come with, uh, with, with a solution to our challenge or solution to our problem? Uh, and then we work very closely with, uh, with, with uh, those uh, guys. So you can say, we sort of deliver a platform or test bed, whatever you would call it, for, uh, for a startup to actually go and test, uh, uh, excuse me for this, but, but test the products in the real world as well. I think it's very important that, uh, that, uh, that uh, any product is actually uh, tested under real life conditions and saying, yeah, but can, can they actually deliver a solution? Uh, rather than a solution to a problem that uh, that has been uh, dreamed up, or we are hoping that it uh, that it exists. So we, we really look at at, at testing the products um, uh, in a real a real life scenario, and we've uh, got um, uh, got pre computed data that we work with in that respect. So it is a real real scenario uh, that uh, that we operate in. Very interesting. Thank you. Um... So when, when you look at startups, what are important criteria for you to focus on um, and that ultimately um, decide on whether you select a startup to work with or not? Uh, it's a difficult one. You know, I, I, I like uh, generally new ideas. Uh, I like to, uh, to test uh, things out, not, uh, not to the nth degree, but, uh, but, but I, I've always been one of those guys that would actually like to uh, put my hand up in class and say, I'd like to be the pilot as well. Even when I ran uh, one of our uh, big units as a profit, profit loss owner in, in DSV as well, I always wanted to be uh, at, at uh, the forefront of that. So, uh, so I think um, what we look at when we look at uh, potential providers, um, we don't want the ones that have just dreamed up that they might be able to find a solution to a problem. We want to get, uh, engage with people that have actually seen it, have got some experience, have actually tested it. Then we are really, really happy to be one of the, call it an early adopter or uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we, we don't want to be the ones that are too engaged in the technical solution in that respect as well. That said, we come up with ideas on, on improvements into uh, uh, operations on uh, ETA calculations and simulations. That are, uh, that are very, very important for us uh, to, to do. And in that one, it's us uh, coming up with the use case, it's us programming uh, the solution as well. 
uh, that that's how we operate. But but we tend to work with uh, with companies that are in the business. They know the business. They understand the business, and they've got a product that they can uh, help us with. And then you, have, as DSV, offer obviously um, a great great setup. Um, assets already in the global network that startups and external companies can use and bring in and add to capabilities. Yeah, yeah, I, I sort of feel that the concept works for, for both parties uh, in the sense that we do actually provide what I called the test bed earlier. Uh, we do provide that. Uh, and, and if you're a small company and you're looking at it, uh, I, I would hope that they would look at TSV and say, this is quite an attractive uh, proposition. Uh, one of the leading uh, providers in our industry in the world uh, it doesn't come uh, much better than that. Uh, and the fact that we are actually also structuring ourselves to um, to avoid what I call the, the not invented here syndrome, because there's a lot of people that can find a lot of solutions to problems, especially when somebody else has volunteered to say, I think we've got an issue here and I think we've got a solution. Then we see that, that it creates a lot of momentum. So it's also putting pressure on our own organization uh, and and also allowing people in our own organization to come with the ideas directly to the innovation hub, which is actually headed or chaired by, uh, by our group CEO as well. So Jens Bjørn is very closely involved in this process and supports it. Uh, and that also maybe makes it a little bit more interesting for people to come up with new ideas that they would like a solution to. So, yeah. Really, thank you for, so much for joining us today. Um, I have experienced you so far as a very exciting partner to work with, and I'm looking forward to the next month and years to continue this great collaboration. And uh, we also have Luca Graf joining us a bit later for the partnership, se partnership session um, where you can dial in and ask all your questions. Luca is the head of digital acceleration and innovation at DSV. And with that, thank you very much, Rini, and have a good afternoon. Thanks for your time. You too, Claudius. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Claudius. Thanks to Mr. Falsch Olesen. So, what does our corporate partner Dell Technologies do to remain at the forefront of innovation? We will hear more from Mr. Tom Mayer. Innovation has never been more critical to every industry across the globe. We are currently in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution driven by technology advancements at a rate never seen before. Everything from artificial intelligence to robotics from the core to the edge, along with a massive need for more and more computing power are pushing all companies and all industries to go through this digital transformation. Every organization needs an approach towards identifying, enabling, adopting and integrating new innovations is to ensure they are properly positioned to effectively leverage these new capabilities. It's critical to build a culture of innovation that allows you to identify the new technologies that align with your strategic vision, quickly test the innovation through pilots that address uh, real use cases. Then if successful, quickly expand and adopt the innovation and finally integrating these new solutions into your larger digital ecosystem. So identifying new capabilities or new technologies is a challenge for most companies. The speed of innovation being driven by existing and startup companies is faster than ever and will only increase over time. So how do you stay on top of this? First, you need to cast a wide net. One thing we have built is an alignment with all of our partners across the globe. We have expanded our culture of innovation to include our partners, which helps us identify new capabilities as quickly as possible. As Dr. Andrew Shang said, none of us are smarter than all of us. So casting the wider net gives you the benefit of identifying innovations that perhaps uh, you may have missed. We've also allocated resources internally to focus on this. You have to spend the time to do the research and stay connected with the industry to ensure you're identifying the right innovations that will help you achieve your own digital transformation strategy. Enablement and quick adoption are also critical. Once you've identified a new technology that can help you achieve your strategic vision, you now need to test it as quickly as possible. Theory is great, but if you're unable to run a pilot, if you cannot test the innovation, you will not know if the results equal your expectations. Even if a pilot fails, you need to fail fast and move on. But just as important is driving adoption. Once a pilot is deemed successful, you need to be ready to grow that across the organization. 
Preparation is important. Change is a challenge for all organizations, for all people. Uh, so developing a well-prepared adoption plan is often just as critical to the overall success as the technology itself. Finally, you need to have an integration strategy that ensures that all the innovations that are being implemented work together in a seamless manner. It's easy to fall into the trap of launching great innovation after great innovation and having all these super uh, solutions be a process, technology, et cetera. However, if they are strong in a silo, but not properly integrated across your overall digital solution, you will not gain the maximum benefit. It's an exciting time for all of us. We thrive during this amazing time of innovation, right? Embracing it, but it can be overwhelming. Success will be determined by picking the right innovation, enabling it and adopting it as quickly as possible, and ensuring that the final product is integrated in a way that the whole solution is greater than the sum of its parts. Innovation is with us forever. A good, strong culture of innovation will prevent you from having to do massive transformation in the future. Thank you very much. Last but not least, we come to our corporate partner, Valenius Wilhelmsen. Let's have a look. What does Valenius Wilhelmsen do to shape the ocean career of the future? Get more information by Rupesh Das. They say an idea is just a thought until it is acted upon and then it becomes real. The digital accelerator was just a thought in 2019 and through months of action, it has now become a significant and real part of Villainous Williamson's journey in digitizing the supply chain. Who is Villainous Williamson? Well, we are one of the world's leading logistics provider for automotive and heavy equipments. On an annual basis, we ship more than four and a half million car equivalent units on the ocean, and we process seven million cars and 200,000 heavy equipments through our global processing centers in 29 plus countries. The DA is incubating and innovating solutions, which not only drives efficiency for our operations, but also provides an improved customer experience as well as contributes towards sustainable logistics. We are doing all of this stuff by partnering with a global ecosystem of tech, talent, and industry. Some of these solutions are already in usage in Villainous Williamson, whereas many of these are in various stages of incubation. So let us see some of these examples. In 2020, you, me, everyone faced a horrible situation with the pandemic, and that resulted in constraints in travel and collaboration. We were already looking at the technology of HoloLens and we just fast forwarded that to see how we can use it more effectively in two areas. One is around remote assistance and second is doing virtual audits and surveys. In one such instance, one of our customers in Seattle, Washington could remotely assist our operations in Pula, Georgia, which is thousands of miles away and it was quite effective. Another area that we are accelerating technologies around inspections. There are millions of inspections that are performed in the whole supply chain. And believe it or not, it is still manual to a large extent in the industry. What we are doing is we are piloting AI powered booths at port plants and terminals to automate the whole inspection, as well as uh, deploying AI powered mobile apps so that inspections can be done anywhere, anytime on the field. Now, while this has significant implications on the survey damage and uh, claims areas, the transparency that it brings in also assists our customers as well as uh, all the players downstream in the supply chain. One of the areas that I believe is ripe for usage in uh, logistics and supply chain is computer vision. There are various AV areas that uh, we are piloting this technology for. In one of the cases, uh, we are automating the whole uh, vessel tally counting process of loading and discharging cars onto our vessel. Uh, the same uh, technology can then be used across various moments in supply chain, uh, be it uh, uh, the loading and unloading of uh, rail cars or gate in or gate out. There are various operational tasks that require visual confirmation. We are using a machine learning based app 
to confirm whether the right Mondrani labels are being deployed on the right cars and whether the Mondrani labels meet the regulatory mandates. We are constantly looking to accelerate meaningful on-the-ground innovation by partnering with people on the front line of our business. It's important to combine technology with human empathy for any meaningful innovation. And I think we are making progress. Thank you so much. This was our last uh, exclusive lightning talk. Thanks a lot to all our partners. Yeah, and now we have one more highlight to show. We come to the last point on today's agenda. We come to our interactive partner sessions. And when I say interactive, I mean interactive. You have the unique chance to get in direct contact with our corporate partners, with Shell, with DB Schenker, with DSV, with Adele Technologies and Wolinius Wilhelmsen. Take a chance, post your questions, use the chat function or use the video call function. You can also be a quiet listener, but I would prefer interaction with all of you. How does that work? For sure, we can show you how the technique-wise thing works. These are also the startups you can meet you must meet in our expo space. You can meet our startups and the strategic partners. How does that work? Click expo for visiting the booth. On our next slide, you can see how to use hop in. I'm sure you know how it works. I tell you uh, again how it works. Click expo for visiting the booth and click session for visiting the partner sessions. That's it from my side. I hope you have and had a good day, a good event with all of us. Now I wish you a lot of fun and good and inspiring talks. And I say bye-bye from my side. See you.